So welcome to my video on the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem can be used to find the lengths of all the sides of a right triangle. And notice how I said it can only be used in a right triangle. In other words, there has to be a 90 degree angle inside the triangle, or there has to be an angle with this little box symbolizing that there is a 90 degree angle. And if you have a right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean formula to find the lengths of all the sides. And the formula is the length of side A squared plus the length of side B squared is equal to the length of side C squared. And it is really important to know when doing these problems that the length of side C has to be the length of the longest side, or it has to be the length of the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is just another way of saying the longest side. So if you have any trouble recognizing which side is the hypotenuse or the longest side, what I like to do is I like to start at the 90 degree angle and I like to point an arrow going the opposite way of the 90 degree angle. And the opposite side of the 90 degree angle is always going to be your longest side or your hypotenuse. So let's get started right away with our example. Here we have a right triangle, so we definitely can use the Pythagorean theorem to find all the sides. And we have one side with a length of 3, we have another side with a length of 4, and then the third side of the triangle, we don't know, that's what we're trying to find out. So the first thing we need to do is find out which side is our longest side, which side is the hypotenuse, because the hypotenuse has to be our C. So I'm going to go to my 90 degree angle and draw an arrow to the opposite side. And this side, which is opposite of our 90 degree angle, is always going to be our longer side. It's always going to be our hypotenuse. And like I said before, our hypotenuse has to be our side C. So the side that we're trying to find that we don't know yet is equal to C. And we have one of the shorter legs of the triangle, which has a length of 3. And you can call the shorter side of the triangle A or B, so I'll just call it A. And since we call this short side A, then we have to call the other short side B. So now we can plug all our values into the formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Our A is equal to 3, so instead of A squared, I'm going to write 3 squared. Plus B squared, and our B is equal to 4, so instead of B squared, I'm going to write 4 squared. And this is all equal to C squared, and we don't know our value for C yet, so I'll just keep it as C squared. So now if we simplify this, on the left we have 3 squared, which is just 3 times 3, which is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 4 times 4, which is just 16. And this is all equal to C squared. Now if we simplify this even further, we have 9 plus 16, which is equal to 25, and that is all equal to c squared. So now we need to get c by itself, and notice how the c is being squared. So in order to get c by itself, we need to do the opposite of square, which is square rooting. So I'm going to square root both sides. And on the left-hand side, we have the square root of 25, which is just 5. And that is equal to the square root of c squared, which is just c. So now we have found the length of our missing side of the triangle. The side c has a length of 5.